What's up, man? This is Rohit Raju with Raju's Rants, the first of maybe many, or maybe maybe this is the first and the last, because I could be speaking into the ether right now, and you know what? That's okay. Um, just talking about this, getting this off my chest, it will be very therapeutic, because we're going to talk about the insanity of the Star Wars fandom and the acolyte getting canceled. My God. I'm a Star Wars fan. Well, Maybe not of the current stuff, but I grew up with the original trilogy, so my the bar was set super high for me with that. Um, and I remember watching the prequels; I wasn't a fan of them. I thought like the acting was bad, and it, I wasn't a fan of special effects. And uh, I remember debating people, arguing with people, going in comic book shops, and and just being like, "Ah, they sucked!" Yada yada yada. And over time, I grew to like them, but I still don't think they're good movies. And I think the Clone Wars helped out. Uh, a lot with that and you could go into like forums and maybe some chat rooms but the internet didn't have social media back then so it wasn't a big thing so when i view star wars i view it with my the standards high right so a lot of things recently i have just been like ah this is not good i liked andor i liked rogue one i liked mando seasons one and two and the majority of animated stuff and so I try to think, okay, well, like my friends are younger than me, like my wrestling friends, and they think the prequels are the best thing in the world. So I'm like, okay, it's a generational thing. I understand it. That's what they grew up with. So to them, that's the bar for Star Wars. Uh, and they do like the original trilogy, but hey, they grew up with the prequels. So I kind of look at it like I'm going in trying to watch Godzilla Minus One, and other people are trying to go in and watch Kong versus Godzilla so I mean maybe that's the difference but even then and you, you'll probably hear a bell in the background because my little kitten is being a menace right now uh, but this the stuff that's happening right now is insane so I have Star Wars on my feed and I'm honestly getting ready to mute it and I don't want to mute it but man it's Every single post is someone crying about the Acolyte getting canceled. Guys, the show was not good, okay? It just wasn't good. It did not generate with the general public, and that's who you need. You need the general audience. And you have these people becoming unhinged and like putting up memes where they're going to go into Lucasfilm and shoot people. It's like, what are you doing? Are you that insane? And these people who are usually blind with uh, toxic positivity and and call anyone a racist or a sexist if you say the remotely negative thing about anything current Lucasfilm, which is just, it's wild to me. And these people are just unhinged. They're acting crazy. And yes, there is a side of the fandom that is racist. Let's not act like there's not. Everyone's always, screwing, it's woke, it's stupid. Like, but I do think it's a very, like the other side, it's a very small but loud vocal minority. Uh, but people, you got to just relax, okay? The Acolyte didn't get canceled because of the haters. Lucasfilm didn't appease the haters. Lucasfilm doesn't give a shit about the haters, the racists, the this or the that. And Lucasfilm doesn't get a shit, give a shit about the extra ultra progressive. They give a shit about money. They give a shit about those views. And the Acolyte didn't get any of that. It didn't. People tuned in for the first three episodes and then they tuned out. And people try to act like, well, it was the biggest opening or had the most views this year on Disney+. Plus, Bro, what else did they release on Disney+, Plus this year? Nothing. Nothing worth of note. And then it had the lowest viewed finale in all of Star Wars. Come on, guys. Like, you got to stop blaming the mythic, like, this racist crowd that review bombed and it's their fault. No, there are actual haters out there. But guess what? They hate watched it and their views didn't help it either. So explain that. But it's weird because people have this mentality of, you don't like it, don't watch it. Well, they didn't like it and they didn't watch it. So you can't sit there and start blaming these people. I just don't understand how insane the fandom is and has become and how it got like this. I know it, like I said, it started with the prequels, in my opinion. And then Disney took over, and then people were excited, and The Last Jedi came out, and then all hell broke loose. 
Uh, but it's funny because those same people that are acting insane now used to talk bad about the people that didn't like The Last Jedi. Oh, get over it. This isn't your old Star Wars. And even like Lucasfilm employees. I mean, this whole fandom menace thing started with them. It started with uh, Pablo Hidalgo uh, singling out, I think his name is Drunk 3PO. You know, he was breaking down the character of Rey, seeing how she was a terrible character, which I do think she's a terrible character. Not Daisy Ridley, but the character of Rey. And he was calling him a misogynist and all this stuff. Then you got this that weird side of the fan base that is blindly positive, And they just start jumping on the bandwagon. And the next thing you know, the fandom menace is born. Because when you insult fans, they're not going to shut up. You're just adding more fuel to the fire. And I don't understand why Lucasfilm does this, but they do. This is something that they do a lot. And it just doesn't make any sense to me why they would do that. Like when they're doing interviews, you can they can pick what questions need to be asked. But they continue to let people talk about this toxic fandom. And they everyone tries to blame everything on that side of the fandom. Instead of blaming who's really at fault, that's Lucasfilm. Because y'all continue to let them put out subpar shit. And subpar shit is building apathy with your general audience. And your general audience just isn't caring anymore. And they didn't care for the Acolyte. They did not tune in. At least you have people that hate Star Wars, or at least what it's become. They hate it because at one point in time, they loved it. My cat is literally hitting every toy. He don't ever do this, but... Now that I'm trying to record, he, he's hitting every toy, which a little shit. But like, yeah, they're building this. Like if you once hate something, that means or you're hating it. You, you once loved it. And guess what happens when they put out something good? When they put out Andor, a huge part of that fan base, you know, the, the, the people that are loud and negative, they're not saying anything because they're enjoying it. Mando season one and two, they enjoyed it for the most part. So when you put out something good, people aren't complaining. When you put out something like the Acolyte, people are going to complain. And that's what's happening. Like, people, I think people, you know, they, they try to say, well, Star Wars has always been political. It's never been dominated by someone's politics. The politics, their politics and ideals, ideology has been woven into a story from a galaxy far, far away. But as of late, it's so on the nose. It punches you right in the face. People try to escape that stuff. They see it every day on social media. They escape it. They don't want to talk about politics. It's like it's cool that you're trying to do inclusion and diversity and stuff like that. But it comes across so forced and pandered because it just feels like you're checking boxes. And then when you have interviews and that's all you're talking about, half your people don't care. It's cool that you're doing it, but they don't care. And just because you have... A person of color, minorities, or somebody gay, or whatever, in the, the the show, that does not make it automatically good. You still got to have good acting. You still got to have a good story, good soundtrack. You still got to have good themes. You got to have all of that, and that's not happening. That didn't happen with the acolyte. Besides a couple people, Manny Jacinto and uh, Lee Jung Jae, those are like the only people I thought were good in that. Everybody else was bad. And I don't agree with the fandom, that one side of the fandom that's like kicking, you know, Star Wars while it's down. Oh, the Acolytes, that's what happens. Go woke, go broke, and talking shit on and on actors' Instagram pages and stuff. I don't agree with that. And although, and I know I'm going to butcher her name, is it Amanda Stenberg? I'm pretty, I just, I'm pretty sure I just killed that. She attacked fans with that weird-ass rap video she put out, and, and that's not okay. Like, you do that, you are putting a target on yourself. You can't sit there and blame all the failures and, and criticism and call people racist. There's, like, some really good critics. Uh, Dan Merle, Christian Harloff, who's usually, like, pro-Star Wars, and uh, Jeremy Johns, right? They have no skin in the game. They're not grifters. And they didn't like the show, and they broke it down, critique, they critiqued it, and they talked about it. And these people, I looked at the comments, and people were calling them haters and racists. Oh, you don't like a woman of color being the lead? And it's like, what are we doing? Like, just because you have minorities or something in it does not make it exempt from criticism. The show wasn't good. The show didn't get views. It didn't generate money. 
Disney cares, all they care about is money. You got investors, they want money. And when you spend $180 million on something and you're not getting that back, guess what? It's not getting greenlit for a season two. And that's what happened. It's that simple. It wasn't the haters. It wasn't any review bombing. The general audience doesn't give a shit about the bickering between the fandom. They don't care about that stuff. They don't care about the review bombing. They don't pay attention to that. They put their TV on. They want to be entertained. If they're not entertained, they change the channel and they don't go back. Or not the channel, but like they turn off and put on a different streaming service or a different show. Acolyte did not bring in the views. And it was so damned expensive. Alien Romulus cost $80 million. Looked phenomenal. Looked like a big budget film. Acolyte cost $180 million and looked like shit. And it looked like shit, but it didn't look big budget. It looked like something that would have been on the CW. And that's not talking bad about the CW, but CW you know, usually looks like low budget. And that's what the Acolyte looked like. You don't expect that. From Star Wars, you expect greatness. And the current Lucasfilm has diluted the brand so badly that the name alone of Star Wars no longer generates the interest like it used to. You used to be able to slap Star Wars on something and people came running. They don't anymore. It's no longer the franchise. You know, Harry Potter's above it. Lord of the Rings, eh, it was... Things of Power kind of messed that up, and I don't know about this new animated thing. Who knows? But it like Dune right now is kicking its ass. There's other things that are kicking uh, the ass of Star Wars. Game of Thrones, Fallout was great. The Boys, all these shows are top tier shows, and then you have Star Wars putting out shit, and it's like, what are we doing? Don't blame each other. Don't blame like this mythical fan base that you think controls and they have the power to. Get shows taken off TV. No, blame Lucasfilm. And blame yourselves too for keeping, like, hyping up subpar shit. That's not on you guys. You guys are allowing subpar stuff to come through. And Star Wars can't be just for you. It can't be just for you. If you want it to succeed, it has to be for everyone. And you see what happens when you want it to be just for you? It gets canceled because not everyone gives a shit. And Star Wars isn't, they, they can't cater to one side of the fandom. They have to cater to everyone. The Mandalorian catered to everyone. It brought in both extreme sides of the fandom, and then it also brought in the general audience. And of course, Grogu helped with that, but Din Djarin was a cool character. He was a gunslinger, mysterious gunslinger. People love that. The ladies love that. And you're bringing in that general audience, and they want to watch. Now, they kind of drop the ball with season three. We'll see what happens with the movie. But that's my point. You guys are sitting there losing your minds, becoming unhinged, blaming all oh, the racists and the haters. That shit is so dumb. Stop that shit. You guys, you guys literally come across like children fighting because someone took your toys. And that's both sides. That is so depressing. It has become so exhausting trying to be a Star Wars fan. You can't have a normal conversation because if you like this... You're called a shill, you like woke stuff, yada, yada, yada. And if you dislike something, you're called a racist, a misogynist. This shit is so stupid. And like I said, you can't even have a normal conversation or debate with someone about Star Wars. I can't even have Star Wars on my feed. And I like to have Star Wars on my feed, but I can't because right now it's just people crying about the acolyte, acting like it was curing cancer and all this other weird shit. It was a shitty show. And it got canceled. It didn't get renewed for season two. That's it. That's all it is. Demand better. You want things to stick around? Demand better. The original trilogy is beloved for a reason. You can sit there and try and shit on it all of a sudden, which you, you are wrong. You like there's there's no if, ands, or but you are wrong. There's a reason why that has held up the franchise and been the foundation for forty plus years. It's because it's great. It may not Go with your politics or whatever weird shit that is. But that's great. And it's timeless. And it's universal. It appeals to everyone. Luke Skywalker's a farm boy. Uh, Han Solo's a blue-collar worker. He's a truck driver. Princess Leia is not your ordinary princess. It appeals to everyone. You know what I mean? You don't need to feel... I didn't feel represented because Lando was in it because he was a black guy. I related to Luke because he was a kid that dreamed of adventure. 
He was a well-written character that I related to. Didn't matter the color of his skin. That's what good characters do. Just because you put a person of color in there, their character could suck. And I would not... I don't identify with that. I don't identify with someone whose character sucks. Just go, oh, you got someone that's Indian in there. Oh, I feel represented. No, I don't. Put somebody that's cool in there. Put someone in a cool Indian character. Don't make him a coward like they did Oh Boy and Obi-Wan. I didn't re- feel represented. The guy was a coward. I didn't care. So like that, that, that whole mentality of that type of shit is so weird to me. It's good to have representation. It's good to have diversity. But when you put that above your story, then you already failed. Every promotional bit, like every interview, that's all they were talking about was their personal politics and calling fans haters and racists. It's like, shut up. People don't have to like your show. And they didn't like your show. And it wasn't a good show. If you like it, congratulations. But don't sit there and try and act like it was the best thing ever because it wasn't. I like the prequels. I would never argue with you. That they're good movies. I like Kung Fu movies. Old Shaw Brothers shit. I would never argue with you that they're masterpieces. I just enjoy them. They're entertaining. You know what I mean? The fight scenes in the Acolyte were entertaining. The majority of it was was shit. You know? Good ideas. Bad execution. It got cancelled. It didn't get renewed. That's it. It's not because of haters and racists. Stop with that insanity. I mean, you people... There's some of the stuff you guys are saying and... Like you're you're telling people that they should like it and they're supposed to like it. And if they don't like it, there's a problem with them. What is wrong with you? How like how would you think like that? Do you not step outside the box and see how insane that is? It's insane. Literally insane. Stop it. Demand better Star Wars. And you get better Star Wars that everybody loves. It sticks around. And then the franchise grows again. Until then, you get a diluted brand... And it's going to continue to get diluted because you have the wrong people in charge there. I think they should fire everybody and start anew. It's not going to happen. You know what I mean? But and I know everyone shits on Kathleen Kennedy. I don't know her. I never met her in my life. She could be a nice person. But she's not doing a good job at Lucasfilm. She's not doing a good job running it. If the head coach, if the team continues to lose and the head coach ain't doing no changes, the head coach gets fired. She's the head coach. And they've been producing bombs. Indiana Jones, Willow, now this. The sequel trilogy was the only trilogy to have diminishing returns with each movie. And now you're going to try and put on a Ray movie? That ain't it. The majority of your fan base did not like those movies because y'all shit on the original characters. They t- that left a bad taste in people's mouths. Not saying people didn't like them because people obviously did, but it wasn't enough. Those movies made money because of the Star Wars name. And then afterwards, people were like, ugh. I know people that liked those movies going in, and then years later, they're like, yeah, they weren't good movies, and they don't like them. Because that realization, the rose-colored glasses, they're off. That realization kicked in, that they're not good movies, and they, they could have done better. And that's what we're continuing to get. If you want Star Wars to succeed, stop blaming each other. And demand better from Lucasfilm. Now don't go in there with all the the torches and pitchforks and saying all the wild shit you guys are saying and calling for people's heads. That's not cool. But go in there, write your letters or you know, do your tweets, but politely, professionally, and say, hey, this shit ain't it. Not like this, but like, you know, tell them like we need better. Star Wars deserves better. And you know how you get better? By not watching it and hoping that they learn their lessons. And people didn't watch this. And that's why you're not getting a new, another season of it. Because people didn't like it. Not the review bombs. Not the haters. Not the racists. None of that shit. Like, that didn't affect it. Disney don't care about that stuff. They care about money. They make money. You're not getting more of it. They want to make money. You'll put out good quality stuff. And sooner or later, once you continue consistently putting out quality stuff... That's not pushing someone's personal agenda. You can mix it in with the the story, but don't punch somebody in the face with it. Let them escape. Once you're doing consistent quality stuff, you'll build your brand back up. You'll get your fan base back. And you'll see you'll you'll see that a lot of people that are talking shit will be silent because they have nothing to say because you're putting out good stuff. But until then, you got this clusterfuck of this fandom. 
going at it and saying the stupidest shit, going back and forth, and it's just like it's like watching kids argue, and it's insane, and it sucks to be a Star Wars fan right now because not only do you not have anyone to talk to about it, talk to about this insanity with, but you're still getting bad shows and probably movies. So, but yeah, man, um, this is Rohit Raju, the Mocha Skin Manimal. And uh, I really hope the fandom gets his shit together. And I hope Star Wars and Lucasfilm gets it together and starts putting out some consistent quality shit. Okay? Can we do that? Maybe 2025, 2024, it's a wrap. Skeleton crew, who knows how that's going to be. Hopefully it's good, but, you know, no, no, not fingers crossed. But 2025, can we kick it off with Mando and 2026 and start hyping that up and not do wrong by that? Because, man, I don't know how much more you can dilute this brand, but I guess we'll find out. All right. Mocha Skin Manimal, out.